Welcome to the third example for chapter three, and this is the second projectile motion example. Now this problem is, this particular example is going to be uh, kind of short on the math components, but it's got an incredibly key thing to be aware of for the setup of this problem and problems like it. So as always, when we start reading a problem, we draw a picture as we go. So Cameron watches a marble roll off a 1.5 meter tall table. So we can draw the table. With initial sideways velocity of three meters per second. Now this is extremely, extremely important. In the lecture video uh, for the start of chapter three and in the previous problem, I made the comment that in our notes, we really should have the statement, when we see a vector at an angle, we break it up into components. This vector, this arrow, is not at an angle. This setup is actually going to be easier math for us. There's no sine and cosine to have to deal with. But a lot of students find that if they aren't understanding that core idea of vectors, they make this a lot harder than they need to, or they don't recognize what this three meters per second is. We still need to make a list of the given information, and in this first sentence, we actually have enough to write down the initial position in X, the initial position in Y, the initial velocity in X, and the initial velocity in Y. All of that information can be um, taken out of that first sentence. Now, because we're watching the marble roll from the table away from the table, we're going to have the starting point in X be zero meters. Because the marble itself is physically above the table by a height of 1.5 meters, we start above the ground. We start at 1.5 meters above the ground. Now, here's where we get to this initial velocity that is not at some angle. It's not at 20 degrees, it's not at 45 degrees, it is just sideways. That means that all of the three meters per second is in the x direction and none of the um, three meters per second is in the y direction. This right here is extremely important for us to be aware of. If we don't actually understand what we really mean by vectors and vector components, this kind of problem will consistently trip us up on assignments and tests and the final exam. And I don't want that to happen. So make a clear note to yourself to kind of review this problem and maybe in a couple of days come back and try the setup before re-watching this video if you find that that was something that you didn't really think about or didn't expect. All right, so now we can get to um, the actual questions. And as a reminder, we did all of this setup even before we finished reading the question so that we didn't feel like we were overwhelmed before we even had a chance to try it. The step three here is to rephrase the question. So we are finding something when something else is true. So in this case, we find the time. We find T when the marble hits the ground, when y equals zero. That tells us, and we'll, as usual in these examples, kind of really highlight for us that this is never a guessing game. This tells us to use the yt equation because those were the blanks that we filled in. All right. So step four is to write down the equation even before we put any numbers in. So we just write out the yt equation, that way it's on our page, we know how to plug numbers in once it's there. And we're using the chapter two, uh, chapter three version of it, rather. And now step five is plugging in the numbers. So we're asking when it hits the ground at the end, zero, if it started at the top of the table, 1.5, here's that really key place where we need to put in zero and definitely not three, minus one half times 
times our unknown t squared. So if we clear this up, we get 0 equals 1.5 minus 4.9 t squared. All right, to solve for t, we're going to add 4.9 t squared to both sides. I'll write that, 4.9 t squared and add 4.9 t squared because that whole term's coming over. We'll make some space though. 4.9 t squared equals 1.5. We have to divide both sides by 4.9. So that will cancel on the top and the bottom. And we can also take the square root of what's now left to be only t squared. We can take the square root of both sides. So that's going to give us t equals, once we take the square root, 0 0.553 seconds. All right. Now our step six check of does that make sense? If we are thinking about this table, we don't really tend to think in meters in our everyday, um, everyday use. But 1.5 meters is actually pretty tall. It's four and some feet tall. So it's a pretty tall um, table, but things tend to drop pretty quickly because of gravity. If we're just talking about tables and not buildings, half a second seems reasonable enough. If right now you wanted to pause the video and just drop your pen next to you, uh, you'd be able to see right away that it takes less than a second to hit the ground too. It's not taking a nanosecond. You can still watch it with your eyes as it falls, but that does seem reasonable enough. The other key thing is um, if you ever get a negative number under the square roots, maybe you forgot this minus sign, that would be where the step six um, comes in. You cannot have a negative num number under the square roots for our physics 125 problems. We do not deal in imaginary numbers. We do not deal in imaginary situations. This is a real marble falling off a real table. A minus sign under the square root is a big red warning flag for us. Okay, but part B is done, or sorry, <laughs> part A is done, and now we can move on to part B. So we have the same picture, same given information, so we just start back up at find blank when blank. So we're finding the distance. That's the distance from the table. So it's x, horizontal distance. And when it lands, just like the previous example that we had, we are talking about a situation where y equals 0. But we don't have an xy equation. And so we need to have when t equals 0 0.553 seconds. So we have the x and the t in our blanks here. This is telling us to use the xt equation. So we will. All right. So we write down the equation before we have any numbers plugged in. And then we plug in our numbers. That's step five. All the math is just step five out of six. All of the physics was before that point. 3 times 0 0.553. And so x equals 1.66 meters. So if it's, that marble is going fast enough that it kind of falls off the table and managed to get kind of far away from the table compared to the height of the table itself. So step six check. Does that make sense? That marble isn't going shooting off sideways, so it's not going to be like a bullet all the way across the room before it starts to fall because of gravity. So we expect it to not be a huge number, but it also is moving sideways, so it's not just going to fall straight down next to the table. So we're checking for sense, and we just rule out any big issues we might have had, and it's always a good idea to train yourself to do this every single time. So a couple of things that I want to note that I could have noted in the previous video, but it was already at 12 or 13 minutes. If for some reason something went wrong in part A and you did not get the right time, you have to use it in this particular example in part B. Not every example we see 
builds on itself the way that this one does. In assignments and on tests and on the final exam, if you have the wrong answer from a previous part but use it in the correct way, we don't take off points twice. You won't lose points for part A and for part B if part B is done properly just with the wrong input value. So that's something that we, that we call we read with you. If you ever hear us say that, that's what we mean, is that we're not going to continue to take off points for the same wrong thing if it's kind of threaded throughout a, um, throughout a problem. The other thing to note is, like I said before, this sideways velocity, meaning that the initial velocity in the y direction is zero, that's something that showed up in lecture, and I made a comment at that point that it is something that a lot of students tend to struggle with. Make a note to yourself as you're watching this video that that is something you're going to want to be aware of. When we have sideways velocity, that's what we mean. We mean that it points to the side, and we mean that this is then true. We don't have to use sine and cosine because it's just pointing to the side. So there's plenty of projectile motion problems coming up, so I will uh, see you in those next videos.